What's going on, everybody? This is Drew Two, and I need the whole entire galactic family to hit that like button, hit that share button, and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get into it. Shout out to the GCVs. All right, let's go. When you stand up for God, people are going to try and put you down. So stay strong and fight. If you have a positive message that you're pushing, all right, if God has sent you a message to push, if you want to push something positive, something that's uplifting, something that's going to motivate people, something that's going to drive people to, to walk a righteous path, do good and believe in God, trust and believe, all right, that the forces that be are going to try to do are going to come against that. It's going to be some ops. It's going to be some opposition. It's going to be some. Um, it's going to be some. What's the word? It's, it's going to be some antagonists. Okay, but it happened to it happened to all the great prophets, and the Bible talks about it. So I have some verses here today to talk about how people went through what they went through when they were trying to do something right, trying to do something positive, trying to do something God would deem as fair and righteous. This is this is what they dealt with and they always ended up blessed because of it and they always ended up on top because of it. No matter what anybody tried to try to do to them, no matter how many people tried to stop them, they always rose above what they were going through and they always they always came out on top. And these verses are here to inspire you and give you strength and keep you motivated. So that way you won't give up and you'll keep up the good fight because it's worth it. And, and, and on top of all that, the battle's not ours. All right. Blessed are those. Matthew chapter 5, 10 verse 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. So when you are persecuted for doing something good, when, when, when people condemn you for doing something good, Blessed are those who are persecuted persecuted for righteousness, all right? When you're doing something good, when you're doing something of God, blessed are you. Because if they persecute you because you're doing something good, you're blessed. God is going to bless you for what you're going through. Blessed are you when people insult you. People may mock you. People may make fun of God and, and, and you in the same sentence. People may have something mean, nasty, or negative to say. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute persecute you falsely. When they when yo when they when they when they smear your name, when they say false things about you, blessed are you. All right, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. This is what God is saying. When these people curse you because of Him. When they laugh at you and make fun of you because you believe in him, because you believe in his word and what he says and what he tells you, you're blessed. You're uh, blessed. Blessed are you. All right. So rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. All right. God is going to bless you. You're going to have a great reward in heaven for the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. All right. And you can you can experience a lot of that on earth as well in the form of you believing in yourself and not giving up blessed are those all right when you believe in yourself and you don't give up you have a great um great uh treasures are stored up in heaven for you the idea that you didn't let go of the good that you have in your mind all right when when you feel that you could be successful when you feel that um, you can have what you want, your reward in heaven is going to be great. All right, that because you're not letting go of the picture of what you want, you're not letting go of the vision that God gave you. Rejoice and be glad when you are persecuted for his sake, when you're persecuted for the vision that God gave you. Blessed are you when people insult you, when people tell you, Y'all, oh, man, you think you could be great? Oh, you, you can't do anything with your life. Blessed are you. When people condemn you for trying to do something uh, uh, amazing or wonderful or great or creative with your life and they have negative things to say about you, you're blessed. All right. God has got your back. He gave you that vision. So rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. Rejoice and be glad. Great is your reward in heaven. Great is 
the uh, manifestations that you're going to get because you did not give up. All right. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets before you. Matthew chapter five, verse 44. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And I just want to say something. Yes, in the afterlife, there are riches. But when they're talking about heaven, they're talking about a state of mind. You're experiencing everything here on earth. Why, why reading the Bible? Don't be so caught up in heaven that you don't think you can have any good here and there's no good here for you to experience. You're not just you're not supposed to suffer your whole entire life. And then as soon as you die, everything's going to get better. If, if, if you don't fix your mind here, you're going to have the same thoughts in the afterlife as well. So what you have to do is you have to rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. When, when you don't let these people kick the idea out your mind that you can have it, great is your reward in heaven because you're not letting these people spoil your treasures. You're not letting these people spoil your, spoil your gift. You're not letting them make you think that you don't have a gift. All right, great is your reward in heaven. Great is your reward in your mind. Heaven and hell are states of mind. All right, so... But blessed are those who are persecuted for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. All right. Blessed are those who are persecuted for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you when people insult you, persecute you falsely and say all kinds of evil. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. They can say all they want about you. But rejoice and be glad because what you know to be true is that you can be successful. What you know to be true is that you can have that vision that God put in your mind. That's what you know to be true. All right. And that's the kingdom of heaven. The idea of what you have set up in your mind. Your mind is either you're either in a, a state of heaven or you're either in a state of hell. That's why they say the kingdom of heaven is within. Seek seek the kingdom of heaven first and all these things will come on to you. Seek the kingdom of heaven first. You have to seek a righteous mind. You have to seek a right mindset. You have to seek a mind that believes, that thinks, that knows it can have what it desires. So that way, all these things will come unto you because you sought the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven within. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. All right, love your enemies. You want to be able, you want to be able to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you because back to Matthew chapter 5, 10, blessed are you when people insult you. When these people persecute you, you're blessed. So what you have to do is focus on the fact that you're blessed. If you focus on the fact that they're persecuting you, you're giving more power to them, but you're supposed to love your enemies because you're so blessed and you're so focused on the kingdom of heaven that all you is all love it should be all love when people try to say negative things about you when people try to speak badly on you when people have the worst things to say about you it should be all love it shouldn't get you into a negative state because you know that's not you you know whatever they're saying about you is not you you know that it's not true you know that you're a godly person you know that you're a goodly person you know, you, you, you don't believe in the false narrative or the false prophecy of what that person is speaking. All right. Matthew chapter five, verse 44. But I tell you, love your enemies, love your enemies. All right. Look for the best in them. They may be bad. They may be negative, but look for the good in them. So that way they'll they'll be operating under the uh, law of the golden rule. You'll the way you look at people is the way they're going to act towards you, all right? So that's why the Bible is telling you to love your enemies. When you have love towards your enemies, all right, your ways are pleasing the Lord, all right? When a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies find ways to have peace with him. When a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies will find ways to be at peace with him. 
All right. That's why God is telling you to love your enemies, because when you love your enemies, it has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with you and your connection to the law. When you love your enemies. All right. They will have great peace with you because you are in accordance to the law. And plus, they are persecuted. They are persecuting you. So you're blessed. All right, you're already blessed because they're persecuting you. So that's why God is telling you have love for your enemies because he wants you to operate in according to the law. He wants you to obey the Lord. He wants you to obey the law. And when a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies will find ways to have peace with him. So how do you uh, make sure your ways please the Lord? By, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. God got you. Pray for those because those people need help. They got hate. They got envy. They got jealousy. They need help. All right. They're persecuting somebody who believes in God. They need help. All right. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. This is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Me personally, I would just focus on the I am strong part. That's where I get from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. I will focus on the I am strong part. All right. You take delight in the weaknesses. You take delight in the insults. You take delight in the hardships. You take delight in the persecutions. You take delight in the difficulties. Why? Because you are strong. When you focus on I am strong, you will take delight in the weaknesses. Because when you say I am strong, it cancels out the weakness. There is no weakness when you focus on I am. Whatever you add to I am, that's what you're going to have. So when you have I am strong, you can't be weak. When you say I am strong, their insults won't have that much power. When you say I am strong, the hardships will seem like easy ships. When you say I am strong, the persecutions, you'll realize that you're blessed. And you'll focus on the blessing instead of you'll focus on the blessing, which is a connection to God instead of the persecution from man, which is a lower level vibrational entity. All right. Let's talk about it. All about where you put your focus. You either put your focus on God or you put your focus on the devil, on a lower level being or you're putting your mind on something higher. All right. And difficulties. When you say I am strong, ain't there's nothing that can be difficult for you when you have the mindset that I am strong. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. I am strong. All right. First Peter chapter three, verse 14. But even if you should suffer for that is for what is right, you are blessed. All right. If, if they try to get on your nerves and stress you out because they hear you preaching a positive message. If, 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 if they want to condemn you because they see you on social media and they see you talking about God, if, if you um, feel a certain way about something that's going on in the world and it's related to something good or something righteous and it's wrong and you feel a certain type of way about it, if they have anything negative to say, you're blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. And why don't you fear their threats? Or should you be frightened? Because you are strong. You have the strength of God. You have the strength from the Lord. Miracles will happen. All right. You'll have you'll have uh, God's strength. You'll have God power. God will be there to back you up. It's all with the spirit. All right. God will work in you, through you, and as you. So you do not need to fear any threat or be frightened because you are blessed. You're blessed in, in, the, in the way that you are protected. You're blessed in the way of 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 22. The Lord is your rock, your shield, and your deliverer. All right? You are blessed. Do not be frightened. All right? When you're frightened, you, you, when you're, you can only be frightened because you chose to focus on fear instead of focus on God's word. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 37. 
who shall separate us from the love of Christ? All right, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate you from God's goodness? Who? All right, shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? All right, should any of these things separate you from Christ? All right, trouble, hardships, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, any of those things. Should any of those things make you not want to stand up for God? Or should those things make you want to stand strong in the spirit and fight? You, you, when, you, when, you, when you know that nothing can separate you from Christ, you can stand strong in the spirit. Can't none of these things separate you from Christ. None of these things can separate you from God. All right, not trouble. Troubles can't separate you from God. You're those, man, that's why, I, that's why I love the Bible, yo. These troubles cannot separate you from God. The, the things that try to make you feel like it's the end of the world, poverty, uh, uh, th anything cannot separate you from God. What is God? God is wealth. God is health. God is success. God is, is I am rich. God is money. All right. God is um, um, abundance. So what can what can separate you from God? Are you going to let trouble separate you from your abundance? Are you going to let hardship separate you from the fact that you're abundant, that you should know that you are abundant, that you should believe you have a divine inheritance? You have an invisible supply just waiting for you to access it, to tap in. You have a never-ending supply of wealth, of health, of success, of prosperity. You have infinite money. That's why God says, access the kingdom of heaven first and all these things shall come unto you. You have to access your mind, go within, tap into the infinite money, the infinite resources you have within you through the universe and the divine mind, your divine in in inheritance is there. God's just waiting for you to reach out. God's just waiting for you to get the feeling that you have this. You have to get full of the feeling of what you have and what you desire. All right, you have you already have these things. You just have to be the one. All right, you have to. Are you my very son Esau? You have to feel like you are the one. All right. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to let these things separate you from the love of Christ. It's a mental thing. You don't let poverty, you don't let thoughts of poverty in your mind. That separates you from the love of Christ because the love of Christ is I am rich. You don't let thoughts of ill health separate you from the love of Christ because the love of Christ is I am healthy. All right, you, you don't have any disease. You don't have any health issues when when you when you're when when you're connected to Christ and you don't let anything separate you from him. All right, should hardships, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger or sword, none of these things. All right, as it is written, for sake we face death all day long. All right, we face negativity all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. All right, they they see us as a sacrifice. All right, no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. All right, Christ loved us and through him, we are more than conquerors. All right, we're not just waiting for them to destroy us. We will conquer them, all right, because nothing can separate us. Not their troubles, not their hardship, not their persecution, not their danger, not their sword. Okay, because like First Peter chapter 3, verse 14, do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. All right, back to Peter. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. If you are insulted because the name of Christ, you are blessed. If they insult you for Christ's name, you're blessed. All right. You are blessed for the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. They're, they're mocking God and they're insulting the creator when they, they make fun of you, when they mock you, when they have negative things to say about you just for 
preaching the gospel or not even on that level just for saying something positive all right because i i say preaching the gospel because that's what that's how they look at it but even when you just have a positive message even when you just motivate them even when you just want to uplift people and tell people that they can have the best even even for that alone they will they will face trouble for um for uh mocking you even for telling them that they can have the best when they mock you suck their teeth whatever that's bs you're you're you're, um wasting your time like they they will face that they'll face wrath for that all right if you are insulted because of the name of christ you're blessed so when they say all those things you're blessed even if even if it's just something positive and they have something negative to say about it you're blessed because the spirit of the glory and of god rests upon you you have god's spirit on you and his glory is resting upon you so nothing they could say nothing they could do to take to stop his uh, spirit of glory resting on you all right so all the insults in the world you have to focus on the fact that you have the spirit of glory and of God resting on you. What can, what can somebody say and how can something affect you when you focus on the fact that you have the spirit of glory and of God resting on you? That would just wipe. I could feel it right now. That just wipes away and clears away. And that, that just wipes out negative energy flat. All right. First Peter chapter four, verse 14, the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. That'll make you feel good. That'll take a negative feeling and turn it into a positive one. That, that'll wipe out toxic energy in a second. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. All right, now we at, um, where are we at? James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised him. When you don't give up and you you steadfast believe in the Lord and you steadfast, hold steadfast and believe in your dream, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. When you don't give up for God, when you don't give up for good, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, having stood the test. You didn't give up for God. You didn't turn to evil, wicked ways. You didn't retaliate. All right, that person will receive the crown of life. You let God fight that battle. All right, you believed in God. You believed in his word. You believed in the fact that he had your back. You didn't let uh, poverty or anything separate you from the fact that you knew you were rich. All right, you you um, persevered under the trial. You stood the test of time. You didn't let anything, all those negatives, separate you from Christ. All right, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown. All right, when, when you don't let anything separate you from the fact that I am rich, you'll receive your riches. When you don't let anything get in the way of you thinking that I am healthy, you'll receive that health. Because that's what God promises to you because you love him. Oh, shoot. Sorry, y'all. I didn't mean to shake. I, I shook the wrong phone. Sorry, y'all. When you, um, yo, because y'all, we get, we get real in the spirit, all right? Because you love him, all right? God's not going, yo, you're going to get the crown of life because God promises that to those who love him, to hold, those who hold steadfast to their vision. That's why God says, blessed is the child who has his own. Blessed is the child who has his own vision. All right, because blessed is the one who perseveres under the trial of holding on to that vision. Having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him, those who love God. When you love God, when you love good, you know that you can have a good life. You stand the test of, of, of going through life and people trying to stop you, people trying to, to deviate you from your plan, people trying to get in the way of your good, trying to sabotage you. you, you stand the test of that, you'll get the crown. Especially when you do it for God, when you believe in God, when you believe in good and you're doing it for a righteous reason, then you already know, all right, you're going to receive the crown. When you, a righteous reason is believing in something that God told you, and not letting anything separate you from that.
Romans chapter 5, verse 3 through 5. Not only, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, hope, and does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out onto our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. All right, so we have God's love poured out all over us. What we go through when people want to do us dirty, what we go through when people want to behave in a negative way, God's pouring out his love on us. We have God's love poured out over us. All right, when we pers- when we persevere through the sabotage, when we persevere through the abuse, when we persevere through the the energy vampires, all right, the monitors, the gang stalkers, all right, when, when we persevere through all that, and we keep our hope, all right, and that that does not put us to shame. All the suffering that we went through, all the people with the weird behavior, don't put don't allow that to put yourself to shame. All right, you you went through that. All the being a targeted individual, all right, you went through that and have hope, all right? Don't allow that to put you to shame. Have hope, God says, because his love has been poured onto you in your heart through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. All right, God has given us the Holy Spirit, all right? God, God's love has been poured out into our heart through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. All right, so God's love has been poured out through our heart, through the Holy Spirit. All right, God gave us the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. So with that right there, having the Holy Spirit, that's very powerful. All right, so people could persecute us. People could have negative things to say. People can talk bad about you. But keep in mind, you have access to the Holy Spirit. They try to put you down. They can't put you down when you're focused on the presence of the Holy Spirit. You're not focused on their put down. You're focused on the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's all about your focus. It's all about your awareness. It's all about where you take your mind. That's why the kingdom of heaven, you seek the kingdom of heaven. It's your mind. It's a mind state. All right. You you can't have all this good stuff God is talking about can only be experienced when you seek the kingdom of heaven in your mind. You seek the kingdom of heaven. All these things shall come upon you. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know what the testing of your faith produces. Perseverance. All right. When you when your faith is tested, it's going to grow stronger and it's going to allow you to persevere through what you're going through because your faith is strengthened. You can't have weak faith. All right. So God will have you go through things that test your faith and make it strong. That time when you were going through those situations where you had to trust God and believe in him and not give up your faith, not waver and know that God was still going to provide for you and make what you wanted to happen. He was going to help you with that situation. He was going to help you through those circumstances. He was going to help you get over that that hump. Oh, yeah, that was you keeping your faith. Your faith muscles were exercising. All right. They were getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And now you have faith to persevere. Whatever else you if once if you got through that, you know whatever else you go through, you're going to be able to go through the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Because God used those things to help you strengthen your faith. So let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. All right, you won't be lacking anything. Because you know the testing of, you know what the testing of your faith produces. It produces perseverance. When you, when you can persevere, you can get through anything. And that's what God created you to do. So that's why he had, he created certain circumstances for you to realize how strong you are and how strong your faith is. Revelation is what we're going to end it with, y'all. Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Okay? Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. What are you supposed to hold on to? All right, what are you supposed to hold on to? You're supposed to hold on to the idea 
that you can have your good. You're supposed to hold on to the idea that your vision is manifesting. I am coming soon. Your vision is coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Your vision is coming soon. Your your manifestation is going to come soon into reality. So hold on to it. You have to hold on to your vision. Hold on to your dream for it because it's coming soon. So don't let it go. If you let it go, you're not going to get it. Hold, it's coming soon. Hold on to it. Your manifestation is coming. Hold on to what you have. That's the uh, that's your vision. Hold on to your vision. That's what you have. All right, your manifestation is going to come into the reality soon, but it's going to come to you holding on to the vision. You pressing it against your subconscious mind and that because it's coming soon it's going to come that way it's going to manifest when you hold on to what you have when you hold on to it no one can take it when you don't let anybody take your vision from you when you hold on to it when you don't let them tell you that you can't do this you can't have that you're holding on to what you have and that way they can't take your crown because what did he say in the end you'll get your crown Okay, he said you will, but yo, back to James chapter one, verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. All right, so I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. All right, they can't take your crown if you persevere under the trial, you stand the test and you will receive your crown holding on to that vision. All right. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't have what you want or be what you want. All right. And when they try, when you stand up for God, when you stand up for good, when you believe in God, when you believe in good, when you believe in yourself, when you believe you can have things, when you believe in God's word. All right. When you believe that um, you're going to be able to be blessed, when you believe that you're going to be able to get through what you're going through, when you believe that what they're trying to do to you is not stronger than who you are. All right. You're standing up for God. Those people may try to go against you, but when you stay strong in the spirit and fight, you will win. So when you're, when you're, when your spirit is feeling vexed, when your spirit is feeling down, come back to this video, replay it. All right. And that way you'll be able to lift your spirit back up. You'll be able to know that if you hold on one day, or yo, if you hold on to your vision, Yo, you'll get to, you'll get your crown because he said, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so you will receive your crown. Don't I mean, don't let them take your crown. So don't yo, don't let them take your crown because he said, I'm coming soon. All right. I want to thank everybody for hitting that like button, hit that share button and hit that subscribe button. All right. Don't be afraid to show some love in the comments and I'll see the, the entire uh, chosen family, the galactic family. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate everybody for checking out the channel. Shout out to the new subscribers. All right, this has been another Drew 2 special. Shout out to the chosen vessels. Peace.